story time yo what up guys how you doing welcome back to the channel today i'll be sharing with you a story um, of what happened to me last year so if you've been following this channel you know that i'm a filmmaker on the rise um last year i got my first client and i lost him <laughs> in the same at the same time period so what happened is last year i started doing uh, client work to try and raise funds you know um working in the film industry it's a little bit expensive so you have to pay your cash flows and stuff and what i did is i started making content for free for people just to create a reel and to be able to showcase my work and one thing that happened um one of the people that follow me suggested my name to this organization and they took in my name and they contacted me they wanted me to come in and cover their event um and i had never charged anyone like i had never charged for my services this was the first time like and i was like yo you know what the standard out here for like a photo session is 250 dollars. i'll charge you guys 250 dollars. that's what i thought was like a lot of money for a three hour session and then i charged them that and then they're like no two 250 feels less we'll pay you 400 dollars. i was like whoa 400 dollars just to take pictures and a video okay i'll definitely do this and then they got me in, I, I went in, I, I took pictures, I took videos, and it was a perfect night in my opinion. But one of the challenges that I had is when you're taking videos and I've complained about it with my A7 IV is the stabilization was just terrible. So I didn't have a tripod because I just thought I was going in to take photos and I didn't have a tripod. I didn't have a, I didn't have a monopod or anything like that. So most of the videos were handheld. So I just knew I had to stabilize these things in post. Um, but the one thing that I realized when I was there was how much the amount of work that I had to do for that client. And I felt like I undercharged and I felt abused, <laughs> you know, but it wasn't their fault because I had undercharged. So I, I had to do the job and I committed to it. And when I went home, I had like over like 60 gigabytes of data on, on, on my memory card, over 500 photos, over an hour of footage to work on. And that's when i realized the scope of the work that needed to be done was extreme and not only that it's when you're charging 400 dollars i i had not factored in the cost of transport the cost for the cameras because i was just like oh it's my camera so whatever i was charging there i was just charging for my time you know um and i had to work on this then i started working on it i gave myself like a two-week turnaround because i don't even know why i say two weeks i could have done it in the day but i gave myself a two-week turnaround for the work and one of the things that happened whilst I was doing it, I, f I started feeling demotivated because I was just like, man, I'm working for nothing here. $400 is less money. I finished editing the videos, uh, editing the photos. I started the video. I was so not motivated. So what I did is I just stabilized the footage <laughs> and compiled the, the, the clips from the entire night and made a 30 minute video, sent it to the client and the client responded, yo, this is trash. I don't like it what you don't like it what about my money bro like my, my mind my mind was just set on getting paid i didn't care but like what the client was talking about i was just like hey i need my money <laughs> you know whatever you're talking about you don't like it, you like it i need my money and in that moment i learned lesson number one when it comes to making videos or anything content related it's you gotta get that 50 percent down before the work emerges because what happens is you show up for the work I didn't ha I didn't get paid right so I didn't have money for um the beauty back then was I wasn't driving but I, I was using ride share so I didn't ha I didn't have money to pay for my let's say Uber we use a platform called Evo out here where you just get a car and you go and you drop it off and do whatever so I didn't have money to pay for that and then I didn't have money to pay to go back home you know um this was all coming out of pocket so that's where the deposit comes in so and then even when you start editing, it's like you're working, but you don't have cash in hand to cover bills, to cover things that the costs associated with whatever work you're doing. Um, so I learned the importance of getting that 50% deposit before you do the work. But I didn't do it in this case because I was just happy to get paid. This was my first client. So they responded, we don't like the work. Um, we don't like what you did. And I respond, I didn't understand what they meant. So if you've ever made photos in Lightroom, you know that it gives you two options, right? Like when you're exporting the photos where it says that um, you can either export a high res, high resolution JPEG or just a 
not high res resolution but a smaller file so that's what i sent to them so i assumed when they're saying quality i was like oh snap when you're exporting the photos they lost quality that's what i thought and then like i re-exported all the photos and and and, and made them high resolution and i thought that would fix the quality issue they were talking about and they still responded this is not the quality that we expected and i'm like i don't understand you know like what do you mean the quality you expected and then they sent me photos that they were like oh we expected something like this but of a professional grade and then what they sent me was an iphone photo and i realized that the issue we were having was the presets or the way that i edit my photos which which made it very weird for me um and then i was like oh i actually get it oh you mean like i understood what they meant so i was just like oh i just have to remove the presets and then it's all happy happy go so like i got it and we ended that call but in the back of my mind i was like yo i'm not getting paid now i'm doing revisions but i don't have any money so the thing that makes it hard is now you have to go do other jobs do other things to make money to cover for that job whilst you're doing it and that's where that 50 is is, is key because if i had gotten so my thing now is 50 percent for before the job is done 25 percent before you get to see the first batch of photos and then if you need revisions and whatever 25 percent at the end when everybody's happy um and then you have to be very specific in the amount of revisions that you do so that people know specifically what they want so what i then did in in that period of time was i removed every like all my presets that i put on the photos and another key thing is you have to show people your portfolio because with these people if you go on my instagram you see the type of images that i create right so i have a specific style i have a specific way of doing things so if you come to me and say hey i need you to do some work for me the assumption is you've seen my portfolio the assumption is you know the type of work that i do and because what will happen as a discrepancy you start thinking oh he's not as professional he doesn't create the quality of work that i do but there's a difference between a paparazzi's photo and my type of photos you know i'm an artist so everything is artistry but also like for me the lesson was when you're offering people these packages you have to be very clear in terms of what you actually do so we we did that i removed those presets from the from the photos and i what i i sent it back and they're like oh yeah this is actually what we wanted but it's not up of the quality and 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 one thing i started picking up in the conversations you know it's not that it's not up to the quality that they needed it's just that we had gotten off the wrong foot cuz now i was getting agitated in my communication i needed to get paid these people are not paying me and these people are like oh yeah we're not paying you because we didn't get the quality of work we wanted and i was like yeah that's the major problem is you got a service so let's say you go to a restaurant right it doesn't matter if you like it or not you have to pay for the service that you got and then it's up to the to the restaurant to say oh we value your business or we value you as our customer to offer you a customer service and be like we apologize for this here's a discount or here's whatever it's up to the restaurant as somebody who did marketing and business i often say to my friends customer service is not a privilege customer service is not something that you pay for when you when you're engaging with businesses you don't pay for customer service customer service is like advertising you don't pay for the advice that you get right that's a business's choice in terms of how much they value you as a customer that they offer you customer service and in that period of time i knew that i could offer these people customer service but i was disappointed because they were holding on to the funds and they hold on to them for like almost a month and i just knew that we we were having challenges you know and for 400 dollars it wasn't worth my time like i i make you know like more than that doing other things and for the period of time if 400 dollars for 3 hours is a lot of money but 400 dollars over a month is like damn <laughs> what are we doing i could make youtube videos i could do other stuff that would pay me the same amount of money than keep doing that um and so as I was having this back and forth with them they called me and they're like yeah we didn't send you funds because you never apologized for 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 the work and I was like yeah for me I didn't see the need to apologize at all cuz the first time um there was a miscommunication you guys didn't look at my portfolio you guys had an expectation of work that I don't do you know if you had looked at my portfolio you'd have known that the work that you got is what's on my portfolio but the learning for me in that period of time was communication so I understood their need for an apology but the other thing again there's this idea that the customer is king and the customer is always right that people have i try not to feel that way when i'm a client for people like i'm always correct i know what i want and i have to specify what i want so you have to give people that benefit of doubt and be like oh 
I didn't also tell you what I wanted. So like, it's not every time that someone has to apologize. Like for me, I would have apologized if we did something wrong from an editing perspective. If we did something wrong, if I if if they went on my portfolio and then I presented something that's not on my portfolio, then I feel the need to to apologize. But ultimately, we had a conversation. They finally agreed to pay, um, and they were so petty. Like when you're paying. Um, when you're paying for a service in, in Vancouver, you have to pay taxes. So most of the way we speak, nothing is has tax. And then I send them the invoice. And then this guy's just sent the 400 without the taxes and stuff. And I was just like, you know what? It's not even worth having that conversation. But I knew in that instance when they did that, that the relationship was damaged, you know. Um, and the, the, the main thing to carry out of that is the lessons that I'm here to share with you guys. It's mainly number one, when it comes to clients, you have to really communicate in the beginning, have an understanding of where they stand, where you stand, what the budget is, but also pre-qualify the client for yourself and pre-qualify yourself for the client. Ask them what makes me the person that actually is good to help you with your job, you know, and, and that helps understand what the expectations are and what needs to be done for the job to be done and tell them what you can do, you know, like this is what I do. I can do everything else, but this is what I do. This is what's specific to my skills. And this is the work that I stand by. If you pay me X amount of dollars. And the other thing is don't undercharge yourself. Do research, learn like what are the people charging? $400 is something that people charge for headshot. And I was charging this for an event. So that also was on me to learn, to understand how much should you charge. And number three, shorten your processes. You know, we know what the work we do and how much effort goes into it. It doesn't take two weeks to edit photos and the videos and stuff like that, but have an understanding of, of, of the timelines. Cause I think you want to do things and move on real quick. You know, an event for me, if I could time allowing is if it's on Saturday, do you have them have their content ready by Monday and move on from that project? Number three, I would say is make sure to get that 50% deposit. If someone's not willing to pay you that run away, cause it's not worth it. It's not worth fighting over money with someone who doesn't want to pay for it. And then the fourth lesson is in communication. Understand who you are, understand what you stand for. And I know people are obsessed, especially in the country that are not in the country, like in Vancouver or in Canada, like we're saying, sorry, but don't always apologize. Stand firm with your principles and your beliefs and, and do work that, that, you know, that you can stand with. If someone is coming after you, someone's trying to make you feel bad, uh, you'd be able to say, Hey, this is what I do. This is what I stand for. This is the transaction. It's a transaction at the end of the day. We're not in this to be friends with, with conducting business. And then my fifth lesson that I had to learn was like, yeah, the customer is not always king. The customer is not always right. Especially people who try to use money to make you work, you know, without paying you. I think that um, in marketing, we say you always want to understand what's the customer's um lifetime value to you that's where customer service and relationship comes from is what's your lifetime value so if a customer works for me today and they pay me 400 but in the lifetime of them if they're going to make my business millions of dollars then that's the customer you want to maintain but if the customer is going to be a headache and they're paying you then that's the customer you don't want to maintain those are the type of people you want to filter out but reputation is key in, in our business so you also want to be weary of that but i think that you know or for us, whilst reputation is is key, the the results of the work that you do also speak for themselves, you know. Um, and people will continue to work with you, especially if they see the quality of work that you put out and they understand, oh yeah, I don't know what happened between the two of you, but for me, it seems as if you create quality work and how you treat your clients also matters a lot. So those are some of the lessons that I learned. That's how I made my first and lost. That's how I made and lost my first client. Um, I'll still, I'll still keep working on that part of the business. I've hired a salesperson who just deals with clientele because I'm definitely a technical person. <laughs> and I'm trying to limit the amount of communication that I have with clients and, and focus on the technical sides and just hire people that compliment me. I am in touch with my sales. I know everything. Everything is scripted and I'm, I'm there for the whole process. But I just have an understanding of that. Like I tell my team, listen, the client matters, but do not sell yourself short. You know, we know what we do. We know the work that we do and we keep getting better at that. And definitely the clients will keep coming. 
So let me know in the comment section what you think of my story. Um, let me know in the comment section if you share similar stories, how you've handled it, how you've handled this discrepancy with clients. Are you of the belief that customer is king, that client is king? And, you know, let me know in the comment section. I look forward to having a discussion with you guys. With that said, I'll definitely be seeing you in the next one.